this is the scrap fabric I mentioned in my last video. So this is just some kind of velour or something, but it felt real strong. It was in their scrap bin. So I'm just going to take it. This is my bottom seat frame. We're going to take it. We're going to hog ring it to the seat frame. And then we'll, we're going to do the same thing on the back. Uh, an upholsterer that a friend of mine had do his car used all of his scrap carpet to do this because the carpet was nice and thick and would keep the springs from poking through the foam and all that stuff. This stuff seems pretty strong, so uh, that's what we're going to go with here. Last time I had a pair of hog ring pliers in my hands, I was probably, I'm going to say I was 14 years old, I think that's right. Uh, I might have been 13. I worked at a batting cage all summer long and they had the big nets and uh, we had to repair nets and the owner was uh, he never wanted to spend any money doing anything which was fine he paid us I think it was two dollars and 25 cents an hour to work there and I was under 16 so they didn't have to even pay me minimum wage so I was below minimum wage so he rented some scaffolding on wheels and uh, he didn't want to pay the extra for the railings up top so we had three levels of scaffolding and we were working on the top level with no railings I don't know how tall that is, I don't know my scaffolding, I don't know if scaffolding's 8 foot or if it's 10 foot or what, but we were up there and they would wheel us around. He had nothing to grab onto, you were surfing on the top of a three story scaffold. Oh that sucked. For two dollars and change an hour, OSHA would have had a fit with that guy. God, I can just remember being scared shitless up there, moving around thinking I was going to die. One day, a guy named Brian Durso was working with me. He was a big kid. Wasn't the brightest bulb on the tree, you know. And he, he had his finger back behind something, and he hog ringed his finger to the net. And he was stuck up there, and I had to come up with some kind of way to get him cut off the net. So I had to find some cutters climb up the scaffold with him and cut him loose from the net. That dude was bleeding like a stuck pig. God, good old Brian Durso. They just barely fit. I'm leaving about an inch on the edge of everything so that uh, when it, you know, rolls over the corner there, you don't get a sharp metal deal. I gotta give Musty One some props here. The electric meat slicer. How the hell does this thing work? There we go. Uh, from Walmart, 13 bucks. So hopefully this will do a good job cutting. sort of freelance this corner here. Uh, I think this slicer actually works better like this than it does with the power on it. I made some centering marks here and here and then here and here so that I can, I know this is all inexact, you know, but uh, I don't want anything to translate through that I screwed something up. So that's what I did, and so we're going to sort of test fit this guy and see how it goes. <laughs> wow, that's not easy, kids. Feels comfy as hell, though. Whew. How are ya? I'm lacing up the uh, tie-down spots here and uh, I just sort of cut some slits into the fabric 
and uh, I'm using some mason line. Uh, it seems to be pretty tough stuff. It's nylon versus cotton, so I figured it'd probably hold up over time in the old gear here. And uh, the factory had this all as kind of one piece of string and they looped it through, but I'm guessing they had a real nice jig to hold it on or two sets of hands or something. I tried to lace it through as one piece and I just didn't have it in me. So this is how we're doing it. I've seen other people do it this way, so that's how we're doing it. That looks pretty good. You may need to tighten some of them up. I stuck a little piece of cording in the pocket that I made. I think that's going to work. Uh, this is kind of a three hand job here, but we're going to try and get it done with just two. Probably got a little adjustment to do, but I'd say by and large, I'm happy with that. That's going to go in the old gear and look pretty good. Got my two seat bottoms done. Uh, this one looks better than this one. This was the first one I put together today, and it just didn't cut the foam as well, I don't think. So I think I'm going to take it apart and redo it with the foam cut a little bit better but uh, that was all I got done today guys those two put on uh, that was absolutely exhausting it's uh, it's been like 105 today or something which is I mean it's just kinda of been normal uh, but I've been working out in the garage I've been trying not to do that a whole lot at least for not extended periods of time And I mean wow you know you get to work for 30 minutes or something then you gotta go inside and cool off <clears throat> so didn't get a lot done today but I'm happy I'm happy with the covers themselves how they are both of them have a little bit of little blemish right in the corner that one's got it in that corner that one's got it in that corner 
And it was just the way that all came together. I couldn't get the machine to do it. Uh, the good news is the back of the seat comes in about right there, so hopefully we just won't see that. Uh, but, you know, this is the first set of seats I've done. Uh, so I'm, I'm pretty damn happy with them. Look good so far. So we'll see you. Well, I almost stole somebody's line there. So that's it for today. I'll probably see everybody on the mumble tonight. Don't let your meatloaf.